السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وبعد Always we begin with the praise of Allah. We send our prayers of peace upon Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, We continue our daily tafsir, the tafsir of the 31st chapter of the Quran, Surah Luqman which is a surah that was revealed in uh, the early to middle Meccan period uh, most likely in the middle of the Meccan period in the first 13 years of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Risala and the surah it contains uh, integral integral messages um, uh, that are important for all of us uh, to consider uh, we are at verse number 5 yesterday we spoke about verse number 4 where Allah says alladhina yuqimuna salat those who are established in guidance um, those who recite the Qur'an and receive its wisdom, that the wisdom enacts in something that leads them to guidance. So they become hudan wa rahmatan lil muhsineen. They find guidance and mercy in it, and that is given uh, as a reward to those who do good, lil muhsineen. Those who do good for the pleasure of Allah alone. Alladhina yuqimuna salah They are those, the sign of them being from the muhsineen, being from those who are doers of good, is that they are constant with constancy in their prayers. وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ And they are those who are giving of alms and giving of their sadaqah and charities to others. وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِهُمْ يُقِنُونَ And they remain certain that they will have a final return to their Lord who will question them about the life they lived. Our verse today continues with this same theme. Verse number 5. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They, meaning those who recited the book, found in it wisdom, established guidance, developed compassion and mercy, which led them to being from al-muhsineen, having a place of ihsan. They are those who then became constant, and their sign is that they were consistent and constant in their prayer, and they never forgot the needs of others. They were givers of charity and zakah. They always kept at the forefront of their mind uh, that they are in a return to the Akhirah, they will have a hereafter where they will be questioned. What is the outcome for them? Ula'ik, for that group of people. Ala hudam min rabbihim. They are upon guidance from their Lord. Now notice that the ayah begins with guidance and the path to it achieves more guidance. It keeps you on that guidance. And therefore Allah says in other places in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْ زِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ Those who established guidance, we gave them more. And therefore, uh, you always will find people who hear a lot of talks, who know a lot of things, they know what's right, they know what's wrong, but they don't change. And you might admonish them and give them warning and they know better than what you will say to them, but they don't change. And the reason is because they haven't established the initial guidance that they know about. So anytime you know something and you don't practice it, don't ever expect Allah will lead you to something better in your life unless you consolidate and practice what you already know. So if you're not a person who prays regularly, don't expect then that you're going to be saved from other sins, other things that you want to give up. Your eyes are infected by pornography, not just because it's a lustful intention in your life, but because your salah isn't right. You're having bickering and arguing and, and hostility with your family and your wife and your children and your father and your mother. It's not just because of what's happening there, but because there's an imbalance in your life. And if you became muqeem as salah established in constancy in prayer, and a giver of zakah, then the other things will fix up in your life as a consequence of the barakah that that invites. And therefore you hear the words of the ulama, أَصْلِحْ مَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ يَصْلِحِ اللَّهُ مَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ Establish and fix what is between you and Allah, and Allah will fix what is between you and others. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدَىٰ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ This word huda in this context as being something that is an objective to be achieved, uh, it means that you become clear-sighted. Huda, remember we said, is that you know which way you're going, so you can see the path. It also means that you're able to distinguish it from that which leads you to other than it. So you know this is the right path, and something that looks similar to it, you know to stay away from it. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدَىٰ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ the one who gives you the huda is who? From their Lord. And therefore this huda isn't always self-evident. There's different layers of hidayah, different layers of guidance. Now the most, of course, intimate level of guidance isn't that of irshad, isn't that someone points you in the way and says, hey, go that way. Because some people tell you, no, 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 you're going the wrong way and you still don't follow them. The guidance that we're talking about here is the one that is self-determined 
within you that is put as a compass for you by Allah. So your heart sees what your eyes fail to see. And therefore Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصدور. It's not that their eyes are blind, it's that their hearts are dim and blinded to the truth. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَىٰ هُدًا مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ They are upon a firmness of guidance from their Lord. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ and because of that guidance, they become from those who are destined for success. They are those who are muflihun, um, uh, will attain to a state of happiness. They will have success in this life and in the next life. The word muflihun uh, comes from the word falah, which uh, in Arabic means success and achievement and so on. But its root really from an Arabic sense means cultivation. Farming. In, in Arabic, you call a fallah, a farmer, a cultivator, uh, with the same word to mean success. And that's very, very important. The reason that's important, my dear brothers and sisters, is because you're a farmer in this life. You're a cultivator in this life. You're planting seeds of righteousness that you seek to harvest. <laughs> the harvest is on the day we see it. And the Prophet would warn us of the bad harvest. In the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, narrated by Tirmidhi, it's an authentic Sahih uh, Hassan hadith, hadith, Hassan Sahih hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Should I not tell you of the thing that if you control it, it will help you with everything in life? And then the Prophet uh, you know, indicated to his tongue, Kuffa alayka hadha, ya Mu'adh, be careful with your tongue. So Mu'adh said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, are we accountable for every single thing that we say? Every single thing? And the Prophet said, your mother has lost, lost you if you don't know this. You're, you're ruined if you don't know this. What else will put people on their face in hellfire? Except what they will harvest as an evil consequence from the sins of their tongue. Meaning that the words were seeds that by the time you reach Allah, they become a tree of, of, of sinfulness. May Allah protect us from that. So you want to be a cultivator and a planter of seeds of righteousness, of righteous conducts. They're little, little things. And therefore consider this concept where the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, and Allah says to us in the Quran, that not, not even sin, and it'll come in this surah. Uh, you know, this is one of the advice that Luqman will say to his son a little bit later, and Allah plants this seed for us now. Uh, Ma min, uh, there isn't an atom's weight on the earth or deep in its depth, except Allah will bring it forth. So that little seed of your deed uh, becomes a fruit, uh, a, a tree that fruits. May Allah make our fruit uh, a delight for us on the Day of Judgment. So you are a farmer, you want to do righteous deeds and to find success in anything in life, you must act like a farmer. What does a farmer do? It's back breaking work. You have to wake up before the sun rises. You got to clear the field, take off the stones, uh, take away the weeds. You got to put, uh, you know, fertilizer and nourish the soil. You got to till it and turn it over. You got to uh, make sure there's enough water, not uh, and enough sun, not too much sun and not too much water. You got to make sure that you're going to plant the right crops for the right season, the right time for the right conditions. You got to make sure to rotate your crops. You got to do all these things before you're even going to get anything. And once you planted your trees, you might have to wait years before the fruit becomes plentiful enough that you can actually sustain yourself off it. That concept of a falah, of a farmer, that backbreaking work is your life in this life. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he gives us the imagery of our life and death, he says, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Give them the example of their life in this in this condition. كَمَا إِنْ أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ It's like water that we descend from the heavens. فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا It brings to life an earth that was dead, desolate, that had nothing growing in. And it begins to grow and then it gains its strength. فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْرِيَحِ But eventually the fruit is scattered and everything returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue inshaAllah tomorrow with verse number 6 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to talk to us about the consequences of not being obedient to Him and humble to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي لَهْوَ الْحَدِيثِ there are those of men who prefer uh, play and word over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, I hope you will join me then, inshaAllah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. 
اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك وصل اللهم وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته